well, to go to something else completely, to take your minds elsewhere. Picture the scene, an operatic heroine dying tragically on stage, meeting some terrible end. You do not have to be an opera fan to be able to imagine it. The arias they sing are often very beautiful, of course, but their fates and roles, predictable. This issue is something that the award-winning all-women string quartet, Zayed, have addressed in a new project. They've teamed up with a male countertenor to showcase the arias of tragic heroines by 17 different composers to play with the idea of a man singing such parts. Here they are performing an aria from Bizet's Carmen, Love is a Rebellious Bird. <laughs> I'm joined from Austria, where they're performing tonight from uh, with one of the quartet, the first violinist, Charlotte Maclay. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, how, how did this project come about? Well, um, actually, when the project started back in 2020, um, it was Theophile Alexander Singer and us having a little coffee. And um, he was telling us about um, how he got into opera when he was three years old. He got this vinyl at the time of Carmen. And he just loved it. And uh, this is actually how he decided to be a singer. He just didn't quite get why she had to die at the end. But he was three years old, you know. Um, but then, you know, time passed and we we're having this coffee. And uh, and he was telling us that. And we were like, um, yeah, actually, why is she dying? She's dying because a man is in love with her. Oh, that's not quite right, is it? Uh, then we were like, she's dying because she's a free spirit. And she wants to live her life the way she chooses. Well, that's also not very satisfying, is it? <laughs> and so we started to look at uh, more great areas from uh, famous operas. And we noticed that wherever we looked, the heroine was dying in tragic ways. We looked at more operas and we saw that whatever the context, she was uh, suffering or killing herself or dying from love, stabbed, suffocated. Well. You know, you get the picture. Yes. And the shocking thing is that the more we looked into these super beautiful and famous areas, and I'm talking over four centuries because um, this is 17th century to 20th century with Piazzolla, the more we discovered that there seemed to be only one way of treating the heroine, almost like if the beauty of the areas had to go hand in hand with watching a woman suffer in different ways. It's a bit like Corrida, really, but, you know, it's a great amount because opera is wonderful. It's a great amount of beauty, uh, amazing staging. But what we realized is that all of this beauty was, in a way, hiding a message behind. It's that all of these are written by men because at the time women didn't have a space for writing music for many reasons that we can get into later if you want. But basically, we're looking at men writing fantasies of women suffering and dying other way to enjoy an evening of high culture. Do, do you think you'll, you'll be able to change something with this? Yeah, I actually believe so, because, you know, we had the premiere of, uh, because the um, No Dame, No Dame, this both a CD and a show, and we had the premiere of the show in France last week. And the, the reaction of the audience was amazing. We had a standing ovation and many people were very, very moved to the tears, you know, and what what, what, to very... see to see a man singing th th these well, sorts of roles, or, or which it's, it's a whole thing, I guess. But what was really interesting is that for most people, watching a man sing these areas was not a problem. Watching women being in charge of directing the music was not a problem, and this means that things which have been a problem in the past don't seem to be anymore. So for me, this is extremely encouraging, and. Um, you know, it's a humanist project. It's not It's not because we're often asked, is this a feminist project? I think it's a humanist project. It's about all of us, men and women, you know, how we live together equally with no gender stereotypes or, or gender cliches. Is, is opera moving slower, do you think, than other parts of, of life in terms of artistic representation and, and those differences that you describe? I think it is, but... To be honest, I think um, I think a lot a lot of places are moving slowly. I mean, thank God things are uh, are starting to change. 
Um, but, you know, just to give you an example, because without even looking far at places where women's rights are really not respected, um, you know, we are a quartet of four yeah. women in England um, and in America. For all of this time, we were starting with great masters of our art, which were mainly men in their 60s, because at the time, Twin Quartet was uh, mostly men. It started to change later, but it's also it's still very rare to see a whole female quartet. But the message we always received was, oh, it's a shame you're a great quartet, but you're going to have to make a choice. You're not going to be able to have a family and a career. And I'm talking about this uh, 10, 10 years ago, and still we have younger, younger musicians calling us to ask for advice because this is still what they, have, they are being told. So I think there is space for changing in the musical world, definitely. Well, I, I think a lot of people would agree with you, but they still enjoy the music. They still enjoy, I suppose, the traditions of those uh, of those particular performances. But, you know, also open, I suppose, to seeing things done anew. And, and maybe they've seen that more in theatre than they have in opera. We will see. Uh, Charlotte McClay, thank you very much. Uh, no Dames is available digitally. That's the name of the project. Uh, and it's also on, on CD. And the Zaid Quartet have now started to tour. And you can find out a bit more on their website about it.